Okay, so welcome and thank you for joining me on this workshop. And uh, Eric Hanana said it's all about confidence. So the agenda for today is going to be to talk a little bit about me, tell you about my story, my struggles with confidence. And then we are going to talk about what confidence is what causes a lack of confidence and um, you know why we can all suffer from events that reduce our confidence and then we're going to look at techniques and tricks and tips to increase confidence we're going to have a short hypnosis session and then we're going to talk about what else you can do and then at the end I'll ask for any questions or comments and um, yeah, you can ask me anything you want then. Um, so, about me, who am I? So my story started in 2015. I'm a hypnotherapist, a life coach, master practitioner, and a mindfulness practitioner. Um, and in 2015, something very strange happened and it made me start looking at the situation I'd gotten myself into. I wasn't in a very happy place. I'd had a difficult divorce um, and all kinds of issues. I suffered with emotional dysregulation, uh, emotional flashbacks. I was um, emotionally dysregulated and I couldn't function. I got to a point where I was quite um, depressed and I just kept flashing back on this strange event that had happened. And until that point, I'd been shy and introverted and um, I started questioning how I'd gotten into such a, a mess, such a state. And my coping strategies to cope with my lack of confidence and my anxiety were quite narcissistic. Um, and again, I started um, looking at where that came from. And so then in 2019, last year, I was awarded a Professional Achievement Award and announced the best hypnotherapist in Windsor, Berkshire by Bark.com. And uh, last, well, August, I spoke at an international coaching and leadership summit. So, what is confidence? And so confidence is an umbrella term for many different things. Um, I asked a question on Facebook, what does confidence mean to you? And I got about 80 different answers. And some people said it means facing fears and overcoming them. Others said it's acting without fear of judgment. Um, some said it's about inner belief and believing that you're good enough no matter what happens. Um, and confident people are, regard, are able to act regardless of fear because they have an inner belief. They know that, you know, they'll be okay no matter, you know, if the project or, or whatever they're trying to achieve fails. And it's also about being authentic. Uh, no one is perfect and so being confident is about realizing that and accepting your in inadequacies and owning them. So what does confidence mean to you and you know share your your views in the chat let me know what you think confidence means to you in the chat box.
OK. Mm -hmm. Not down yourself, yes. Being at ease around people, yes, yeah. I used to. I used to get very anxious around people. Trust your own judgment with it, yeah. To be able to express your emotions, yes. Being yourself without fear. Fear of judgment or fear of failure. To love your inner child, I, I like that, yes. I would agree with that. So what causes a lack of confidence? And we're all born <clears throat> with confidence, I believe. We're all born as blank slates um, and life events happen and they knock our confidence. For me, my lack of confidence came from childhood and everyone's doing the best they can with what they have is my favorite saying uh, and many of us were traumatized by our parents our teachers and other caregivers because they had their own issues which they projected onto us and as children we're blank state we're blank slates and our neuroplasticity is at its highest until the age of seven is known as the imprint period. It's when we're learning all the most difficult tasks, when we're learning to walk, to feed ourselves, to talk. And in the development stages of life is when we're forming boundaries and we're learning about ourselves and our environment. So if we're growing up in an environment where we're being constantly put down, shouted at, physically abused, we internalize that abuse and we think it means there's something wrong with us. So we develop what's called an inner critic, a uh, toxic superego, I believe Sigmund Freud called it. And that's a toxic inner voice that attacks us. So basically we are internalizing um, the voice of our caregiver and that can develop into uh, not just a lack of confidence but a very um, vicious uh, putting ourselves down and insulting ourselves but you don't have to grow up in an environment that's abusive just growing up in an environment where there's a lot of arguing can cause a child to feel pushed out and unwanted and children tend to think everything is about them and also uh, another thing that can cause a lack of confidence is if you're growing up with a parent who is suffering with anxiety or um, you know they're, they're not feeling comfortable in social situations you can observe that and because you're looking to them to tell you what's safe and what isn't you can adopt the belief that the world's not a safe place and that you know it's dangerous and that you you're not safe and that can also cause a lack of confidence so how did a lack of confidence affect me so as i say i didn't just have confidence issues i also had um, <coughs> what would be considered CPTSD, complex PTSD. And I used to suffer with very bad emotional flashbacks and anxiety. Um, and my focus was very poor. Uh, in school, I was always in trouble for daydreaming because I used to disassociate a lot. And so this caused me to look in the wrong places for confidence and um, I got married to the wrong person. Uh, um, I brought uh, cars to try and make myself more confident. I suppose I brought all kinds of stuff 
to try and make myself more confident and um, it didn't end well I also adopted narcissistic coping strategies like I'd put other people down um, and I'd fly off the handle very quickly I couldn't form healthy relationships I couldn't attach to people in a healthy way um, you know, I was needy and I needed reassurance constantly uh, I could feel a lack of confidence affecting my work and it reduced my work opportunities uh, employers didn't take me seriously um, and I used to uh, gain like mess around a lot to try and cope with my lack of confidence and in school I was always joking and thought I was a bit of a comedian um, so how does confidence affect, affect you tell us in the chat box tell us what you do with more confidence what would more confidence enable you to do so techniques for increasing confidence for me things started to change when i hurt my back um, hurting my back meant i couldn't slouch anymore and uh, so my posture had to change i had to sit up straight and walk taller i couldn't walk um, with a you know hunched over uh, posture and when we hunch over and you know that's a very low status um, posture to take we're basically doing that to protect our vital organs and that's telling our uh, mind that we're you know under attack or under threat it's, it's putting us at a very um, beta kind of uh, a beta uh, image I suppose beta state is um, is saying that we're, we're low on the food chain whereas when we sit confidently and we have our you know our body parts um, our vulnerable body parts open like our chest and our throat we keep our head up straight that's you know giving a signal to our minds that we are alpha and by doing that we release all kinds of confidence boosting hormones so just by changing your posture you can start to notice an improvement in confidence and you can also it's been shown that by standing um, in what they call a superman pose with your hands on your hips for two minutes i believe it increases your testosterone levels by up to 30 percent so it's it's a very good thing and a lot of sales people um, you know stand like that before they make sales calls or go to sales meetings to give themselves a, a confidence boost um, another thing that we need to do is to set some goals because if you don't know where you're going you're never going to get there and if we're not working towards a goal or if we're just living life aimlessly we are going to be we've got nothing to measure ourselves against we've got nothing to measure our progress against So we're going to be vulnerable to having our confidence knocked by the slightest little thing and we're going to be jumping from one thing to the next so what we need to do is set smart goals and smart goals are specific so we need to think of something specific that we want to achieve they're measurable achievable obviously there's no point in setting a goal which you don't believe you can achieve they're relevant so they're relevant to us and they're time bound so uh, 
an idea of a smart goal with regards to confidence uh, could be well for me it was public speaking so um, at the start of this year I decided that I needed to do more public speaking, I needed to do more Facebook lives, I needed to be confident talking to groups. So I did a public speaking course um, and my goal was to be able to give presentations like this um, by August last month, well month before last month. So. That was my goal at the start of the year. So it was specific because I was saying that I want to be able to give presentations to groups of people. It was measurable because I can obviously know if I've achieved that goal or not. It was achievable and it was relevant to me and it was time bound because I put a time limit on it, which was August of this year. So that would be an example of a smart goal. Another thing we can do is to get out of our comfort zone. And when we first exit our comfort zone, we go into the fear zone. And this is where most people give up and they go back into the comfort zone. So once we get into the fear zone, we start experiencing a lack of confidence. We start looking for excuses. We allow ourselves to be influenced by other people's opinions. And if we are able to get through that and move into the learning zone, we can start to deal with challenges and problems. We can begin to acquire new skills and we extend our comfort zone. So this little zone here, once we learn these new skills, this little zone here moves all the way out to here. And then if we go beyond that, we get into the growth zone where we're able to set new goals, to live our dreams and find our life's purpose. So <clears throat> public speaking was once an issue for me. Uh, in primary school, I was unexpectedly presented with an award and um, it caused me to almost faint when my name was called out. And the same thing happened again in secondary school. Um, so when I had to give a presentation as an adult, um, when I worked in sales, my boss gave me very short notice and um, because I was a people pleaser and I wanted to try and impress him I suppose and I didn't know how to say no uh, I said yes and I ended up getting in front of 500 people and making a plonker of myself they all laughed at me uh, within 30 seconds of me being on stage. So public speaking was a major uh, obstacle for me to overcome. Uh, many people actually fear public speaking more than death and the theory for that is because if, I mean it's the same thing with anything in confidence really. We grow up in you know a tribe and if we, in prehistoric times, if we did anything that went against what that tribe believed or thought we should be doing, they would kick us out and then, you know, we could potentially die. So <clears throat> this is the reason that many people fear getting out of their comfort zone and why many people fear public speaking more than death. So, um, yeah, trauma is something that can really knock our confidence. Um, so, another thing we can do 
another thing I did to increase my confidence was heal my inner child. As I said, I grew up in a um, dysfunctional family, a family of people who had personality disorders. And I was constantly being put down and insulted um, and picked on. And it was quite a violent um, environment. And it and caused me to suffer, you know, a lack of confidence and to get anxious. But we don't have to have grown up in that kind of environment. Um, we all have an inner child and we all pick up unhelpful ideas in childhood. Um, as I said previously, until the age of seven is known as the imprint period. And if we grow up in environments with people that have got anxious, anxiety issues or anything like that, we can adopt the belief that the world is not a safe place. Uh, most phobias are actually picked up from our parents. Um, because again, when we're in that imprint period, we're looking for to them to tell us what's safe and what isn't. And if they've got fear of something, we're likely to pick up on that. So, the power of your mind. You can't be someone you don't perceive yourself to be. And this is why uh, hypnosis is very effective because the emotional part of your brain cannot tell the difference between a real or imagined event. So the more you're able to envisage yourself being more confident, being the way you want to be, doing the kind of things that you want to be doing, the more you're going to create neural pathways in your brain and you're going to be able to become more the way that you're imagining yourself to be. So, um, let's do some exercises to show you the power of your subconscious mind. So, what I'd like everyone to do, we're going to, we're going to do a different, different exercises than normal today because some of you have uh, seen this presentation before and I'm going to make it a bit different for you. So I'd like you to take your hands, clasp them together like that, and then hold them like that with your two index fingers out in the air like that. And then I just want you to imagine that there's a magnet pulling those two fingers together. And just imagine that. Just imagine there's a magnet pulling those two fingers closer together and you just like just imagine it just using the power of your mind imagine those fingers coming closer and closer together and so who noticed who knows those fingers moving closer together? Yep. Did everyone, whose fingers touched? Yep, excellent. Okay, so Another thing we can do is to take our left hand, hold it out with our palm facing up, take our right hand and hold it out with our palm facing down, close our eyes and now imagine that in your left hand we've placed some heavy leather bound books and in your right hand we've tied some helium balloons and just imagining that left hand lowering down with those heavy leather bound books as the right hand rises up 
Just imagining that happening now. And then when you're ready, open your eyes and notice how your hands have changed. Yep. Excellent. Okay. And something else we can do is hold your hold one of your hands out in front of you, um, like so. And then without turning your lower body, without turning your torso, um, just move around from your hips and see how far you can twist around with that arm. And then come back to the center. And now close your eyes and imagine, only imagine, you're going around even further, even further this time. You can go all the way around if you want because it's only in your mind. Just imagine it in your mind. And then open your eyes. And once again, we're going to put that arm out in front of us again. We're going to twist around. And just see if you get around further that time. Did you go around further? Who went around further? Let me know in the chat box. Yep. Excellent. Okay. Going back to the presentation. Okay, so what we're going to do now is some um, hypnosis. I'm going to plug my headphones in. Okay, so hypnosis is a deeply relaxing state. It's part of the um, sleep cycle. Well, there's various theories on hypnosis, uh, but I like the theory that it's part of the sleep cycle, the REM sleep cycle. And we all go through different brainwave states um, several times during the course of a day. They are beta and gamma. They're the waking brainwave states. And as we start to relax, we drift into alpha and then from there we go to theta. Theta is part of the REM sleep cycle and it's a hyper learning state. It's actually been proven that until the age of seven, a child's brainwaves are predominantly in the theta brainwave state. And it's in this brainwave state um, that we can envisage things more clearly. Uh, and then after theta, we go to the delta brainwave state, which is part of the sleep cycle. Um, and that's when our body's releasing hormones and repairing itself. So, who wants to try some hypnosis? Yep, excellent. Okay. Excellent. So if, uh, like I say, it's perfectly natural stay that we all experience several times during the course of the day. If you've ever driven somewhere, got into your destination and not remembered the journey, that's hypnosis. If you've ever been reading a book and uh, being engrossed in the book, lost track of time, that would be a state of hypnosis. 
Uh, if you've ever been watching telly and completely zoned out, uh, you know, and then next thing you know, the TV program or whatever you're watching is finished and it's time to go to bed, that would be a state of hypnosis. Um, but they do say that people who suffer with epilepsy shouldn't um, experience hypnosis. So if you do suffer with epilepsy, uh, don't follow along with me here. Um, so if you don't, then just make yourself comfortable. And once you're comfortable, just allow your eyes to close. And with our eyes closed, we can allow ourselves to begin to relax more deeply. Just focusing on the breathing, just noticing the air flowing in and flowing out. Breathing all the way down into the stomach. When we breathe into the stomach, we trigger the relaxation response. If you've ever noticed anyone sleeping, it's impossible, you know, they're always breathing into their stomach, their stomach's always rising and falling. And so as you continue to focus on your breath, just consider what you do with more confidence. What would being more confident allow you to achieve? You may start to notice yourself going deeper and deeper into that relaxing state of trance. And you really should take your time to relax. You should begin by relaxing your mind and then you can allow yourself to begin to relax your body. Maybe starting with your feet. So I wonder if you can imagine relaxation flowing up into those feet and feeling those feet beginning to relax, maybe to just take up a little bit more space. And then allowing that feeling to float up into your lower legs and the upper legs. Maybe you can feel one leg relaxing more than the other. Maybe you can sense a difference in those legs. Maybe one leg feels warmer than the other leg. As a person starts to enter a state of trance, they can become aware of various phenomena. They can notice the tiny muscles in their arms or legs may begin to twitch a little. And their eyes can start to move about beneath their eyelids as they're accessing that REM state. And then just notice that relaxation continuing to flow up your body into your stomach. And maybe you can get a sense of those ribs just expanding, releasing as you're breathing out.
Maybe you can feel your breathing growing deeper, slowing down as you feel more comfort flowing in. And then you can allow the relaxation to flow around into your back flowing up the spine. And as I said previously, when we stand with a confident posture, our confidence begins to increase. I wonder if you can get a sense of that spine is expanding slightly maybe straightening out in some way as you drift deeper and deeper into that relaxing state of trance the state in which anything's possible becoming more and more relaxed more and more at ease then allowing that relaxation to flow down your arms into your hands flowing back up from your hands up into your neck all the way up into your head And then, I wonder if you can get a sense of yourself entering a special place. The control room of your mind and in this place you can find many different switches and dials levers looking around this place you can find the control for confidence I wonder if you can consider what would happen if you were to adjust that dial just a, just a little just twisting that dial slightly or maybe it's the lever that you push on to full ahead maybe you can turn it all the way up Increasing that confidence even more. Maybe you can get a sense of yourself at some point in the future acting more confidently, feeling more confident just getting a sense of what you could achieve if you could bring some of that confidence back to the here and now And in a moment, I'm going to count from one to five. When I get to five, you can allow your eyes to open, becoming fully aware and wide awake, noticing that something has begun to change, that you have begun to change. As I start counting now, one, 
just allowing the feeling to return to your body maybe you like to wiggle your toes too feeling the energy rising up your body now down into your arms and free maybe you'd like to wiggle your fingers four and after four comes five and you can open your eyes coming fully back to the present noticing how good you feel maybe you'd like to stretch and yawn Excellent. So did everyone like that? Fabulous. Okay. Okay, so I've put together a program to help people increase their confidence. And what we're going to be doing on this program, we're going to be healing the inner child, learning to set boundaries, learning that no is a sentence was something that I heard recently in terms of setting boundaries, I thought. I like that one. We're going to be looking at um, confidence building techniques, setting goals and keeping you accountable to those goals. Reducing anxiety. We're going to be looking at ways to reduce anxiety and stop negative self-talk. And the program is going to be starting on the 15th of October. Uh, so it's going to be, first week's going to be about anxiety and how the inner child influences our lives. Week two is going to be setting goals and doing more inner child work. Week three is going to be mindfulness, emotional regulation. Week four is going to be confidence building exercises. Uh, week five, we're going to be looking at what emotional flashbacks are and how we can stop them. Then week six is going to be in a child and we're going to be reintegrating the various aspects of the inner child so we're going to be uh, reintegrating the inner infant the, re the inner toddler and then on week eight we're going to be looking at more confidence building exercises and seeing you know where everyone is in regards to their confidence improvement 